Hello. Right. Very good morning to all of you. Um, welcome to the uh, second forum, uh, Cybersecurity and Social Engineering and how it affects you. Well, just some uh, quick facts. I think it is reported in the New Straits Times three weeks ago that cybersecurity continues to be the top concern in Malaysia. Okay, according to Kaspersky, uh, the antivirus software company, in 2019, about 13,000 reported cybercrime cases. And up to uh, February this year, there were already 4,000 uh, reported cases in Malaysia alone. So the cyber criminals are continuously uh, prying their eyes on victims and the country's top leaders are also not affected. So you know that the Prime Minister's Twitter got hacked uh, a couple of weeks ago. So even yes, all the uh, measures and protections in place, uh, these sort of things still happen. So before we move on to the forum, uh, I'd like to present to you a video and uh, see what uh, hackers can do these days. So I am joined here by Mike Sasanskin from Synac. You're going to show us how easy it is to hack into a computer. So this is my personal computer. So in this attack, we will pretend to be a... Wireless access point. So your sound is a bit soft. Can you? Like that? So if you go in there and you, you try to log into something called uh, Four Seasons Guest. Okay. As as you'd expect, it's you know the Wi-Fi is around. You'd want to be able to connect to it, and the person who just arrived will think I'm a guest. I should connect to the guest network. Sure. So now if you go to a website that you would you normally use, like Yelp.com. Okay. And you know normally what happens yeah. when you go to a website just after you've logged into a, a hotel network, it says, Oh, please log in. You're in your so here it's asking for your uh, room number and last name, which you would normally do. Right? And actually, I can see your information show up here. And so, part part of the attack is that it makes you, it tries to convince you that you need to do an update. You know, your machine is out of date and it's vulnerable. So you want to click on the, the download button because it's sort of convincing you to do this. And once you've executed, that's it. You're you already have been exploited. So I can I can see it here. It says Aditya's MacBook. Let's say if I want to take a screenshot of your sort of uh, of your webcam, right? Okay. So I have a special command here for essentially accessing your uh, your camera right here. So if I say execute, there we go. I just saw a green light pop up there for a second. For a second, but now it's already too late. And I already know what's what's going on around me. Oh wow! There we go. This particular attack it recorded the picture. But you can actually record the video. You can also record sound if you wanted to. That's really disturbing. You, you can execute things on the behalf. So what I'm going to try to do is actually open the calculator application. Okay. There we go. There's my calculator. It just popped up. <laughs> I can basically execute any types of commands I want on your behalf. So what can people do to protect themselves? You should sort of be on the lookout for... Anytime you sort of do an action and then the computer asks you to do something on your, on your behalf, right? you know, you downloaded something and said, hey, please enter your password. You know, if you didn't expect that to happen, maybe you should kind of stand back a little bit and say, well, does it normally happen when I log into a Wi-Fi access point? Or if you are logging into a network and you didn't expect to be redirected to an update page, you know, you should kind of stand back a little bit and say, Actually, I, I'm not going to download this until I go home and I can trust my Wi-Fi. Well, thank you so much. Great to see this. Glad to have the opportunity to hack your machine. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so, I mean, the video was a bit soft. So, basically, what has happened is uh, the guests check into a room, uh, check in a room at Four Seasons. So, basically, what they did was um, he kind of clicked the, you know, the Wi-Fi connectivity he kind of clicked, there's two Four Seasons uh, free Wi-Fi. And so he clicked on the, the, the person clicked on the Four Seasons Wi-Fi, which was actually created by the hacker, right? So when she clicked in on it, and then the prompter said that, okay, you need, um, you need an upgrade for your MacBook, right? So the moment, the, the, so they thought, oh, okay, why not, right? You need to upgrade your MacBook because you want to use your Wi-Fi. So what the person did was click on it. And the moment they, uh, she clicked on it, the rest was history, right? Uh, the guy infiltrate the uh, her laptop, get hold of uh, her passwords, her personal uh, details, and also he can even activate the uh, the camera on the laptop, right? So some of you, I, I think I realize some of our colleagues always kind of 
you know, you have that cover camera thing because once he had all these things, he knows where you are. So basically, that's the gist of the video. So maybe um, some, some questions uh, we'd like to ask uh, the, the distinguished uh, panelists today. Maybe one of the first questions is, you know, what happens uh, when we key in our personal info online? You know, where is the data stored? And how does technology help to protect us from getting our data stolen? Maybe uh, I'd like to ask Dr. Kareen if she has any idea on this. You can share with the public. Okay. Um, hello. Maybe you can use the other mic. Uh, Hello, yeah. Very good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, very honored and very happy to be with all of you here today on a Saturday morning. So, yeah, so what happened to our data when we actually key the information online? I think a lot of times, depending on who's the one that's collecting our data, right? So, the thing is that um, remember that whenever we actually uh, provide our data, be it uh, online or offline, you must know that who is the one that is asking for our data. And for Malaysia, uh, do know our rights, especially in PDPA. Like the one that's collecting the data, they are actually seven trusts that need to look into protecting our data. So, and for anybody that's collecting our information, uh, be it online or offline, they only can collect information that is uh, need uh, as much as they need to process our application or our, our requests. So and they can't do more than that. And then we actually have a right to say that uh, you refuse any uh, marketing or promotional uh, activities and everything. And you actually have a right to ask them how they store the data, how long they're going to keep it, you know, uh, who have access and everything. Because as we know that uh, data is the new oil, right? There's actually an uh, open market, underground market, black market that is selling our data. How many of us actually get calls and then first thing we ask them is like, how do you get on my number? And they will never answer us, right? So they'll just hard sell whatever they want to sell to us. So I do remember that. And um, as what your video showed earlier on, um, all of us should have basic digital literacy, especially coming in terms of uh, cybersecurity, safety, and all that. So um, please do know that uh, do not click everything that we see. Okay, um, as much as uh, this uh, looks tempting and it used to be like, you must click on it now, please uh, sit back and think for a while. So I think um, that's a good start. I think for all of us here, especially, um, I see a lot of uh, young ones like us and the younger ones in front of us. <laughs> so uh, do know that information that we provide uh, might be there for a long, long time. So I think uh, we are cautious on that and know our rights, okay, in terms of our data protection, right? Okay, good one. Thanks, uh, Dr. Karin. Maybe Cairo Naim, you want to add on on that? Okay. I think See, we need to change the it's on, it's just a bit soft, but no sound <laughs> at all. Yeah. I mean, I'm just a little bit on the video. You talk about the... When we, we see people, they close the webcam camera, right? I remember uh, after watching uh, an episode of Black Mirror. So Black Mirror is a British episode. You should watch it. We talks about technology, but the the dangers of technology. So after watching that that's, uh, that episode, I immediately <laughs> closed the webcam. But then MCO, all the Zoom meetings, all online meetings, you cannot have to turn it on. Lah. Okay, so um, talking about... Um, on um, where is data stored and then how can technology um, uh, help protect it. Um, you know, they, a lot of people say once it's in the cloud, <laughs> it's there forever. So that's why it's very important for us to be th think be before you upload, think be before you post, especially if using um, free services um, so, because if you use free services, then basically you're telling them you can use, you can do anything with my data. So it's very important, like what Doctor mentioned, that you uh, take note of where you are uploading it, who is the service provider that you are sh uploading and sharing your information with. 
uh, and be be cautious lah be cautious just because it's free okay <laughs> nothing is free <laughs> okay so there will always be um, strings attached to it so i would recommend go for paid services even um, the cheapest that you can get rather than going for the um, cheap uh, services so that at least they have some sort of um, they have some sort of obligation to actually protect your data but what do they protect like doctor said you have to actually go line by line lah like how many of us we actually read the acceptable use policy <laughs> some how many of us just scroll and then click agree <laughs> Uh, and talking about the technology, um, at least, uh, at least uh, on on a very bare minimum, uh, you have make sure that your laptop or PC is um, you have the antivirus or endpoint protection, all the basics there. You do not remove like Windows; they come with all this Windows firewall. Use it. Do not delete it. And make sure you always update your system. I remember last time I went to the um, uh, had I went to send my PC. Uh, uh, back then when we used PC, eh? <laughs> uh, I wanted to get it fixed and then there was some update and then and the, the shop owner recommended eh, don't need lah to update, nanti menyusahkan, a lot of work. But that is actually very dangerous. Make sure you have always update your system, be it the OS or application. Uh, whenever there's update, you update. But make sure it's a legit update, not the, like the video. <laughs> uh, so just maybe just a little bit on that. Before yeah. we go to detail. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. I'm. Uh, so please do submit your questions. Uh, that's the QR code here. Okay. I have two very interesting questions. Maybe Wiki can enlighten us. The first question is: Is it compulsory to have a VPN in this generation, or very important VPN? And the second question is: Are password managers safe, like Nord, NordPass and LastPass? Okay. Sorry, I don't know this from a different generation, definitely. But maybe Wiki can answer the first question. Is it compulsory to have VPN in this generation? All right. So good morning, everyone. Uh, VPN, for those, just to uh, give you a brief introduction about VPN, VPN, the full term is Virtual Private Network. Um, so what VPN does is uh, literally it will encrypt your information in a tunnel so that if anyone is sitting in between or in the same network as you, they will not be able to see or sniff your data. Um, I, I believe since we are working from home, we use a lot of VPN to connect back to our office and, and, and use the office resources. So that VPN is something similar, but the VPN that uh, is being mentioned in the question is more to its individual. How do you browse uh, your browsing hygiene, uh, whether you are using VPN or not? For us, um, especially those in the cybersecurity industry, um, we feel VPN is a must. Uh, because uh, the usage of uh, internet and also um, applications uh, has risen uh, since uh, MCO especially. So to protect your data and to be aware on uh, which network you're connecting to is very important. So VPN to a certain extent can help to protect your data from being, uh, I would say, uh, kidnapped by the bad actors or the hackers. Uh, very simple example where you should use VPN is, say you, you are going to uh, for a vacay and, and you need to use the hotel Wi-Fi then there you should use a VPN connection because hotel hotel wireless and, and, and uh, even your mama shop wireless, uh, it, security is not the, the first thing that they actually have in mind when they develop that. It's just as an amenity for you to use. So there might be bad actors. And when you use uh, VPN in those networks, uh, what it will do, it will have an extra protection uh, for your data when you are browsing or doing something um, using the uh, internet. Um, again, uh, VPN usage also comes with a with a with a clause. You don't go and use the free VPNs. So there are free VPNs available, but the bad thing about free VPN is that um, VPN was supposed to keep you private and anonymous. Uh, but this free VPN, some of them, they are actually selling your data to third party uh, companies as well. So that's where you get your targeted advertisements and all that. So you need to pick and choose the right VPN for you, those that are uh, centric in uh, uh, protecting your data. Uh, uh, and, and the VPNs are not so expensive. Like I'm subscribed to one. It's about $5 per month, um, which is about 30 bucks, And you can use it for five devices, including your mobile phones. 
So um, that that is an essential apart from all the other applications that you have on your mobile devices and your computers, right? Yeah, that's very interesting. I remember using a VPN because I was in Singapore and I like the English Premier League football very much. So I have a stadium Astro. So definitely in the, those who are working in Singapore, you know that you cannot watch uh, stadium Astro because I refuse to support Starhub in Singapore. So I needed to uh, buy a VPN so that I can watch uh, my favorite team, Manchester United, play. So that's how I know about VPN. <laughs> if not, I would never use a VPN. But uh, Dr. Karin, do you have anything to add on on that? Yeah, um, that's a very interesting take on VPN. I think uh, what uh, Wiki have explained is what VPN does. I think it's fantastic. Um, so the thing is that uh, in cybersecurity, there are actually three uh, main pillars. The people, the process, and technology. So now we have VPN, the technology. Then we have the process and basically the policies in organizations and so forth and how we do things and all that. And also the people, which is us, the users. So um, I was going to share a story about a VPN um, that happened recently. Victim, Cisco. Cisco is a big MNC company with all the security features and everything. They are using VPN and yet uh, it's been hacked through VPN. Okay, so because there are methods that uh, what actually did happen was that um, the hacker, uh, the criminal actually, uh, op uh, how to say, obtain a compromised uh, Google account. Okay, and then from that, they actually targeted the person through their VPN. And then, of course, VPN and Cisco system, everything, they have uh, MFA, multi-factor authentications and so forth. And with that uh, authentication, they actually went into it and then they actually created a whole different account and uh, assessed Cisco. So it's like, yes, you actually have the best technology out there, but in terms of cybersecurity, it actually still depends on the three pillars, the people, the process, technology. And actually, one of the things that, um, as we were discussing with the panelists earlier on, is that actually uh, a lot of us, the, the weakest link is always the people. So yes, I think uh, good on VPN. But saying that we have VPN and we are all safe is a false hope, actually. Right? Yeah, OK. That's, I mean, uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Karin. The, uh, I think the second question is, are password managers safe? like not pass and last pass. Maybe you want to, Cairo, you want to expand on that? Okay. Um, password, I mean, password managers like last pass, there are a few uh, solutions out there. I think it help, it's a mechanism, it's the tool to help us uh, because frankly, it's maybe like 20 years ago, the only password we need to remember is the password to our laptop, PC, and then email. That's just it. But now uh, we have so many accounts online, um, so it it it's not practical to remember and create different passwords for every application. So having all these different solutions uh, actually helps. Uh, but still, the fundamentals of uh, password hygiene, the fundamentals of having a secure password is still there. So. Because these password managers also have logins, right? So you need to make sure that the login to your password managers uh, follows the right um, hygiene in terms of um, um, uppercase, lowercase, special characters, using passphrase. Um, so whether it's relevant or not, whether it's needed, I would say yes. So it as, as a means of for us to, um, because if we don't use these password managers, sometimes we tend to use the same password or if you're not the same password, maybe just a little bit change. And so it's, uh, I guess it's, it's, it's still relevant to use um, whatever tools that we have. But just like uh, my colleague said, we just said, make sure you, you choose the right application, be it the VPN, be, be it the password manager, be it any app that you download, make sure you download uh, it from a secure source. Uh, like, for example, I think some of you must have heard of the latest, uh, one of the most recent scam where uh, it's a mate, looking for mate, mate app. So what happened was there is an actual legit business that uh, provides mate services, uh, but it only provides services in Sabah Jaya. But then um, a smart, someone smart, they created an app, mobile app that says they are providing services from this company, where in truth it's not. 
and they even do Facebook ads, Google ads. They actually made some investment to show that it's legit, uh, legit, a legitimate business. But then what, what happened was when people download it, and then this is where it happens. So the worst case that can happen is uh, you download an application, which is uh, a malicious application. It's not the original, it's not the legit application. Even like in the video, it was made possible because she downloaded a software, an app. So the same goes to your application. So once your mobile app has been compromised, you downloaded a malicious application, then I would say bye-bye lah. Because like, like my, my friend was asking, hey, how do they manage to get the tag number lah? Uh, how do they get the password to the main bank lah? Because imagine that if you have downloaded a malicious application, it's as if the hacker is inside your app, your mobile app. So whatever you do, whatever you do, whatever you type, man, even if you have VPN, that uh, uh, defeat the purpose because VPN is um, creating a serial connection from, from your mobile phone to the website. But now, the hacker is already in mobile phone. So whatever you type, username, password, gets, uh, they will get the information. So if one piece of advice, one thing that you, uh, as a takeaway from this session, be careful in what you download. Be it from links or just be careful because once they get into your mobile app, then it will be quite difficult uh, in terms of you, I mean, having all these different apps, VPN, uh, password manager uh, will not uh, be helpful. Okay, thank you, uh, Cairo, for the uh, advice. Maybe uh, some question here. Okay, um, very simple question. How to outsmart fishers or hackers? Maybe Wiki, you want to, uh, you want to give your thoughts on that? Yeah, so how to outsmart fishers uh, and hackers? That's, that's uh, a, a very tricky question uh, because uh, it's always a cat and mouse game. The hacker needs to do something first, and then we, the defenders, will try to see how to block that. Um, and, and, and that's how the game is. Um, so how to outsmart fishers and hackers? Uh, it, it's very simple. It's for you to be educated in terms of your digital literacy, like what Doctor mentioned, and also the responsibility when you're using something that is digitalized. Uh, this goes from your uh, mobile phones, uh, goes for your laptops, goes for your accounts that you have, uh, what are you posting online? Um, just, just to share a very simple thing that I usually use in my talks is that when you go to Twitter, this was a few years ago, you can see a lot of people uh, cheering uh, because they got their first credit card. And the uh, worst part is they actually snapped the picture of the credit card and put, post it online. Yeah, I got my Visa card and, and all that kind of stuff. So the comment below that, they were, hey, can you snap a picture of the bag? I want to see how nice is it. Uh, but at the back is actually your CVV number. So uh, people tend to do that uh, even now, even though it's just reduced. So I think the responsibility relies on the users as well. So you need to know what are you subscribing to? What are you registering for? When you're giving out information, uh, to whom are you giving the information? And, and what are they going to do with the information? Even the simple uh, photocopy. Uh, of your of your uh, application, your IC, your driving license. Are we really putting that that stroke saying that for what use only? That is also important. Um, uh, so, how to outsmart is to make sure yourself is educated uh, about all this. You don't have to know how like hackers think and all that. Just be responsible with your data and what you're doing online. Uh, that would actually bring you a long way uh, to protect your your data and yourself from these hackers and cyber attacks. Yeah, thank you, Wiki. Okay, that's a very interesting question after hearing that credit card uh, experience. There's a question from the floor. How can we know if the applications downloaded into our phones are safe? Example, Shopee, Grab, and Taobao, etc. When we input the credit card info, how do we know that the staff of these companies do not steal the credit card information? Maybe Dr. Karin can enlighten us. The answer is we do not know. Okay, and the thing is that which whatever company that is gathering our information, be it credit card and everything, they will try their best to protect. 
Okay, and that is considered if they don't do not have insider that is actually um, mining our data itself, right? So, but then the things that a lot of time even hackers. That's why we have a lot of data breach for companies with all the um, customers' accounts, credit card details, and so forth. So the things that as organizations, um, they will try their best. But then the things that that's the gold mine for all the hackers out there, right? So there is no knowing. But then the things that uh, for organizations out there is a lot of them are going through a phase about not saying that um, not being hacked is about knowing when you got hacked, right? Okay, uh, maybe Cairo, you want to add on? Um, don't feel demotivated by that statement. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, but what you can do, uh, like what I practice, yes, um, the we we will not know. They will do. I mean, all those uh, like Shopee, La, uh, Lazada, Grab, they actually take a lot of measures. Uh, I know they pers I personally know that they take a lot of measures to make sure they are secure. But what we important is what can we do uh, as a user. So um, what I practice is I do not key in my credit card. I use debit card. So I use the at least. At least, uh, I um, in my debit card, I just uh, put in an, an amount of money which I'm willing to lose. <laughs> like say, like 100 ringgit. Okay, I'm willing to lose 100 ringgit. So if someone gets the information, if it's being laid out, I only lose 100 ringgit. So that is one thing that uh, you can do. And um, is this is a little bit of a hassle, but do not save the credit card information. So that is one way, but it's a little bit of hassle. Lah. So I prefer to use debit card. Even booking hotels, I use debit card. When they ask for credit card, no, I don't have credit card. <laughs> use my debit card. So at least you manage your risk. How much are you willing to lose? Yeah. Okay. Um, to add on uh, what Cairo said, it is uh, very true. I think um, one thing that I do, um, all the Lazada and Shopee, everything, I do not put in my credit card details to be saved inside. Um, the thing about uh, cybersecurity is that you have to balance between security and convenience. Okay, so we have to see what is your tipping point, how much you're willing to sacrifice. Okay, so it's like even credit card information, just say that the credit card that you use for your online um, purchases or your uh, online banking and everything, maybe the one that you actually uh, make it to be accessible online, there's a certain limit. Maybe that credit card is only 3,000, you know, is your limit and that's it. So at least you know that 3,000 and, and they will be blocked already and everything. So it's always uh, a choice, okay? So the things that, yes, you want convenience, you put in all the details, you click and everything is purchased. But then um, there's a lot of um, lack of security for the actions, yeah. Yeah. Okay, there's another question from the floor. This is, seems to be an interesting topic. What is the more safer payment method or the most safest payment method? Credit cards or e-wallets? At least for credit card, uh, if the fraudulent transaction happened, we can dispute with the bank. What about e-wallets? Uh, I would prefer cash. <laughs> That's the best. Right, e-wallets, credit cards—they have been. Uh, it's there for a reason. Um, so again, uh, you see. The, the, the technologies, the applications that is being made uh, is for ease of use, right? Convenience. Uh, and yes, those companies that are responsible uh, bringing up this application, they have taken uh, security as, as one of their uh, major point before they even release because I come from a... So what, what we do, my team, we actually check on these apps before it goes live to the users. So we, we highlight all those vulnerabilities, ask them to fix it, and then it goes live to the users. But again, um, we still hear people losing money out of transactions from the bank. Uh, we, we still hear people losing money, uh, like, like someone transferred over a phone call, or, or they just click on a link that they got from an SMS, and then uh, 50,000 is gone. Uh, so it all comes back to users. How do you use the app? How vigilant are you in terms of the data that you're getting? Will a police guy, uh, uh, a policeman call you and say, hey, you, 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 you have done this, you have to transfer money, I will settle the case for you. Is it sounds legitimate? Will uh, LHDN actually call you and say, hey, you have uh, this amount of tax, uh, I will proceed to you to, to settle this case for you, so transfer X amount of money to me. Um, those kind of things are the things that we need to be aware of. 
it's very difficult because hackers will find ways to actually bypass that and we humans we don't have antivirus installed so we are more driven by emotion so when you get scared you tend to do a lot of things that might be wrong at some point so that's why you need to balance and and be aware about what's happening around you so there there is no one way to protect yourself it, it, the technology is there it's it's doing its best to protect your data but it all falls under your hand whether are you using it responsibly or not okay thank you wiki okay good we are getting a lot of questions uh, some quite interesting questions but i have a personal uh, i mean personal question to the panelists maybe you can share personally what is the most ridiculous scam slash fraud phishing text email you have received maybe cairo you want to share what happened to you just uh, 30 minutes ago <laughs> yeah uh, on the way coming here i was just about to go into parking i got a call from scammer <laughs> so usually i because i know all these scammers i usually i just uh, i just put it down uh, the phone up but then oh today i'm talking about the topic Maybe if I uh, play along, I have something to talk about. <laughs> so basically, it was uh, calling from MCMC. Uh, MCMC, if you don't know, is uh, what's it, MCMC? Yeah, MCMC. Uh, MCMC is the regulatory that um, provide licenses to your telcos, your uh, Cellcom, uh, Maxis, uh, Time. So they were saying that I have a phone number which has thirty nine aduan. Aduan suspected of. Um, distributing links in WhatsApp uh, for gambling because I think a lot of us sometimes I even get invited to Telegram channels about gambling. So then I just played along. Uh, so she was trying to create the emotion, try made try to make me scared. Uh, and the I think the hammer on the nail was when they start talking about um, police, right? Uh, then oh so since I cannot or uh, this aduan was made in Johor Bahru since I'm not in Johor Bahru I said oh I cannot go to Johor Bahru I'm in Penang I've never been out of Penang <laughs> just to like to, to trying to create a victim story and then okay so uh, I need you to make a, a police report online so she was about to transfer me to a uh, to a to the police lah but then we got cut off um, so we're talking about funny. Um, because these scammers, they are quite um, smart. They always talk about what's current. Like when MCO, they talk about my sister, MOH. Uh, and then when the EPF has a new B40 punya scheme, they talk about that. But I think one of, us, one of the most um, finest I got was a friend of mine. I think she was all panicking. She was making calls saying um, she, got a, she got a call from um, pencegah maksiat You know pencegah maksiat The religious officer Where they, she said Or someone got caught Because um, As Muslim We cannot be berdua-duaan uh, A man and a woman In the, in the, in the room or hotel So she, some, I don't know this whole story But then From religious department Saying that okay you, uh, We got report that You kena tangkap halwat uh, And then someone made Um uh, uh, Here's an icon or whatnot, and then uh, if you want your name to be removed from the halwat list, and then uh, you have to pay. So I think that was, in a way, amusing, but also mm, she, the person, really made a homework. Uh, find out if you're Malay, you're Muslim, where you live. So social learning is all about how much information that he gets, the culprit or the hacker gets, and they will use use it to your emotion, lah. Another father, another story. Uh, a friend of mine, he's in Bank Negara. He got a call. He was in his office, uh, yeah. Bank Negara, and he got a call from the office number, <laughs> office or uh, office phone. Uh, hello, Inche. I'm from Bank Negara. He was like, "Wait, I'm in Bank Negara. I work in Bank Negara. This is a Bank Negara <laughs> phone number, meaning they just did a random call. They, uh, in this case, the person did not really do the homework. Lah. He didn't know that he was actually called a Bank Negara office number." Um, so, so a lot of uh, stories. I believe uh, you guys will have your own stories as well. Yeah, maybe Dr. Karin, you'd like to share okay. some of your personal experience. I think to be how real the story that they want to sell to you or scam you is depending on how much of your information is out there. So that's why for each of us, we have to be careful what are we sharing outside. 
you know, our home address. Do they know where we work? Do they know where your children go to school? How old are your kids? So these are how they profile us. Okay, so the more accurate information they share with us on their side, then we're like, oh, this guy is legit. They know a lot of things about me, right? So I think for, first of all, to be scammed, I think um, the scammers or the hackers and fishers, what they go, they'll go for the lowest hanging fruit. First, they'll just shoot everybody, okay? So, but then the thing is that the more information our PII, our personal identifier information is out there for them to collect and to profile us, make a story, okay, this fellas, how old, which month they are born, husband or wife, when's their birthday. So these are the things how they profile us. So this, how much information that we are actually available out there is how much um, they know about us, okay? So talking about ridiculous stories, so um, so this is a story about the scammer not doing homework, okay? So, because it's funny, right? So I've got this friend, so he's got this phone call from LHDN. Say, oh, Mr. So-and-so, you haven't paid uh, your taxes, LHDN needs, like it's already closing down, you know, we're going to file into um, court and everything. So my friend on the other side, here, girl, I'm unemployed. Lah. <laughs> so, so these are the things. So the things that, so these are status if you're not updating. So they have, they, they have got nothing to catch you on. Okay, so, and of all the cases that just now Dom have uh, presented, you know, 13,000 cases uh, reported. So as you know, the reported cases are usually just a tip of the iceberg. Right, so what's actually happening out there is much, much more than what we see. On the normal, usually it's like maybe 20, 25% has been reported. And a lot of times, especially in Malaysia, more than 40% are actually fraud cases. So which means, fraud means it got nothing to do with technology. It's always because of the humans, it's how we react. Like what uh, Vicky mentioned earlier on, is about how they push your buttons, okay? So the things that some people respond to fear, some people respond to anger, you know? So different people respond to different things. So the things that, if they know us as a person, they have already profiled us. They know where is your soft spot. So usually that's, that's how they go about it, right? Yeah. Okay, there's some uh, question from the floor. Um, the first question, it, it is, is it worth reporting these scam calls? Maybe you want, uh, Vicky, you want to uh, enlighten? Okay. I, I always get the tough ones. <laughs> Uh, uh, reporting scam calls, yes. Uh, to a certain extent, uh, it can help. So one, one, one incident that I had was, um, I, I'm not sure if you are aware about this um, debit credit card called Big Pay, right? Uh, so I, I received a scam call uh, using a WhatsApp number uh, and they called me and said, at uh, that time my Big Pay account, uh, my Big Pay card going to expire. Uh, so they said, hey, uh, you are having this card, right? Uh, your last four digit is this, right? And uh, yeah, your card is going to expire. Uh, we are going to send you a new card, but for verification, we need you to tell all the 16 digit number of your card. And it's like, uh, I, to be honest, I don't have my card with me at that time. So I, I, I just say, hey, I don't have my card. Can you just tell me and I can confirm whether that is my number? Then he keep on pressing saying that, no, I only have the four digit. Uh, can you tell me the 16 digit? I say, no, 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 and all that. And then he got bored of me and then he hung up. So what I did after that is I actually wrote an email to Big Pay support. Uh, you can even chat with them uh, over the app and then tell them, okay, I got a call from this number and uh, probably you want to, you know, uh, take action about it. Maybe send an email to your, all your subscribers about it. Uh, that can help. But if you're talking about whether if you got lost, if you have already lost your money uh, or, or you fall in a scam uh, for a scam, uh, e-commerce scam, for example, th there's a lot and you are expecting to get your money back by reporting, uh, the chances are uh, very slim to none, right? So what's gone is gone. Um, and... and uh, Reporting, yeah, can help to alert people about this, but in terms of getting back what you have lost is very minimal, I would say. Um, so as a responsible uh, user who has fallen victim for a scam, uh, you you have the obligation to go and report to the right authority. Uh, Cybersecurity Malaysia is there for a reason. Uh, if you're being attacked by a specific brand, uh, for example, like Big Pay or whatever, you can drop an email to them. Uh, they will really appreciate it because uh, it would help other people not to fall victim as well. So, so that's my take on uh, reporting a scam. Okay, thank you, Wiki. Okay, um, 
we touch a lot about cyber securities and hackers and all these things. So uh, we're going to touch a little bit on uh, social engineering. I saw some questions coming from the floor. But uh, before we uh, uh, touch base with the panelists, uh, we'd like to show you a video. on uh, This is a social experiment uh, carried out by Jimmy uh, Kimmel. I'm not sure whether you watch his shows. But uh, some of you might watch, uh, have watched this video before, but uh, check it out. The social experiment is called What is Your Password? Right? Uh, so it's quite interesting. Let's, uh, let's watch and see. We've been hearing a lot about cybersecurity lately, largely because of what happened to Sony. Companies and individuals are more concerned about the safety and privacy of their information than ever. President Obama has unveiled a number of new proposals this week to crack down on hackers, and he plans to address this in the State of the Union speech on Tuesday. And it's great that the government is working on this, but the truth of the matter is we need to do a better job of protecting ourselves. You know, the most popular password in the United States is password123. And as long as we're, as long as that's the case, we're vulnerable. So today we sent a camera out on the Hollywood Boulevard to help people by asking them to tell us their password. And <laughs> this is how that went. We're talking about cybersecurity today and how safe people's passwords are. What is one of your online passwords currently? It is my dog's name and the year I graduated from high school. Oh, what kind of dog do you have? I have a Chihuahua Papillon. And what's its name? Jameson. Jameson. And where did you go to school? Um, I went to school back in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. What school? Uh, Hempfield Area Senior High School. Oh, when did you graduate? In 2009. Oh, great. <laughs> it's like my cat's name and then just like a random number. Okay. But, Has like, you had this cat for a while? Yeah, she's my childhood pet. Aw. And what's her name? Her name is Jolie. Jolie. Mm -hmm. So like a password of yours would be Jolie and then a number. Yeah. Like number one? Uh, like my birthday. Oh, when is your birthday? Uh, June 12th. Oh, nice. And what year were you born? Uh, 95. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So Jolie, six, 12, oh, 95. Yes. Got it. So you mean to give my password right now? No, I cannot do that. But we all want to know what it is so we can tell you if it's strong or not. Oh my goodness. Um, um, let me think. Okay, one is Tel Aviv. Yeah. Four, six, eight. And then Israel. It's, it's only three, but it's, you know, it's, uh, for me it's strong enough. Ireland. One, two, three, four. Gemma. One, two, three. Spell G-E-M-M-A. <laughs> well, most of them are Italian. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, like, so well, like. Like, what's a good Italian password? Uh, my grandma's name. What's your um, grandma's name? Uh, Maria. Maria. So Maria is your password? Oh yeah, now you know my password. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Well, the important thing is he, they learned a uh, terrible lesson. So, very interesting video, right? What is your password? You know, so a lot of people try to guess, is, is it your last four digits of your IC number? Is it your date of birth? So, I mean, that's a quite an interesting uh, social engine. I mean, we can laugh about it, right? We laugh how silly are these people, but uh, actually closer to our hearts, we have to question ourselves whether do we uh, give our information out and whether these hackers can kind of social engineer the way through to your password. So there's an interesting uh, question on the floor. Uh, we'd like to know more about social engineering too. So how does that affect us? So maybe, Ricky, you want to answer that? or Yeah, I mean, how does uh, uh, social engineering affect our lives? Okay. Yeah. All right. Social engineering, um, guilty as charged. We do it as a service. <laughs> so uh, we, we, we use it uh, to test whether um, employees in the organizations are aware what they should and shouldn't do. Um, so I usually make the phone calls because I, I don't know, I can work very well under pressure when they're asking questions. Um, so... Uh, how social engineering will impact you if you if you go and look back at some of the big cases that happened about four or five years ago when it relates to cyber attack um, there will be an element of social engineering in front of it someone clicked on something someone did something uh, someone downloaded something that they shouldn't um, so it always starts with uh, social engineering 
The reason why it's starting with social media is because most of the organizations are mature enough to understand that cyber attack is a real thing. So their front gate is very well protected. So for a hacker to actually break all those gates and then come into your network, it's, it's a hassle. And, and to be honest, these technologies are great uh, in the first place. They can detect and block you uh, in, in minutes. So the, the only thing that doesn't have any protection in terms of technology is human. Uh, because we go by emotion, we go by what we see, we go by what, what we are, what we are doing. And that's why hackers likes to target the human. And the bad thing is when they have already targeted you, you are already inside the environment. So you have bypassed all those strong gates that they have and they're already coming into your laptop. And from your laptop, they'll move around the network and do what they need to do. Um, so that's how social engineering impacts us. Uh, many of the cases that we have seen so far, even in Malaysia, um, that there will be an element of human. They did something. Uh, and that costs uh, money, that costs reputation to that particular organization. So social engineering is something that we all need to be aware of. Uh, it can happen through email, it can happen through phone call, WhatsApp, SMS, Telegram, uh, social media. What may you that people can actually connect with you? Uh, it can be used uh, as a social engineering tool or platform to attack you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Vicky. Okay, we have an interesting question from the floor. A lot of companies, corporates use social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, and they, they get hacked most of the time. Admin users are usually locked out uh, from uh, assessing their own site. So do you think that uh, companies should avoid using social media platforms or there are, or there are any other ways that uh, these companies can work with, the, say, social media platforms to have their IDs and sites secure? Mm. Very interesting question. Maybe Dr. Karin, what do you think about companies using the likes of Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube to promote their companies and how do they I stay think, protected? Um, for a company that do that uh, that does that actually is good. Because for them what they want is marketing. They want to outreach the fastest, the most efficient way. So being on Facebook, IG and thing, yes, it's uh, the best way to be felt, to be present. Right, so for them, it is definitely a very good marketing tool. So it's about um, being um, attacked, you know, being uh, how to say uh, hacked and everything. So this is the I'll say that the responsibility of the organization of uh, of the team to actually secure that account itself. You can actually do um, uh, how to say uh, password updates and so forth. So you know that there are basics that we need to go for, but how um, usually hackers or criminals penetrate because sometimes we slack. Okay, once we slack and we take the easy way out. So it's like, okay, so this today's public support is this. So the things that, for example, in organizations, a lot of time they make it into a policy that you need to have certain numbers of, um, I don't know, I would say, uh, passwords that you have, you know, uh, uppercase, lowercase, special case, and everything. So the thing is that sometimes our policy is so tight, but as users, they're like, huh, they want 16 alphabets and everything. So they're like, they themselves and cannot be from word and everything. So they, a lot of time when I visit um, sites for vulnerability assessment, the policy is fantastic, okay? They have all these things, how many numbers they have, special character, upper letter, uppercase, lowercase, everything. But after that, in front of all the PCs, they got post-it notes. <laughs> so it's like, hello. <laughs> so the thing is that you have to be have a balance, right? You have to make sure that it makes sense, okay? So a lot of us have been advised to have um, different passwords for different accounts, for different things and everything. How many of us are actually doing that? Honestly, right? So exactly. So either maximum we have three or four, we just move around. <laughs> so at least when we try, it's like this doesn't work. Okay, maybe it should be the other one. Okay. So minimum that as a user, okay, or organization, what you can do is that change it every few months. Okay. So actually that's how they, one of the ways they do social engineering, they hack into your weakest account. So they're like, okay, this is the password. So use the same password, target the other accounts. You will not hit all the accounts, you hit some of the accounts. Okay? So this is part of social engineering. And for organizations, uh, this time we're talking about social media. So another thing that I would like to highlight for organizations is that 
um, a lot of time, the one that have the highest power or authority is always the CEO, right? So I always advise organization, please give them the least privilege because no CEO will open the email, okay? You should to hack into an email or system of the CEOs, call the secretary and say that, boss, one now, quick. So what they'll do, they'll just give it, right? So this is social engineering, all right? So these are cases that we see. So the thing is that um, social medias and all these things is fantastic, especially for organizations, for marketing purposes, for outreach and everything. So the thing is that um, you need to tie in back with all the controls to be in place, right? Okay, maybe uh, Cairo, maybe uh, a question here. Maybe from a corporation's point of view, what are some of the most effective measures to combat cybersecurity? Who, who is responsible and what needs to be done? Okay, before I answer that, can I, answer, can I add on to the sure, question? Sure, 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 no problem. I have a very strong opinion about hacked accounts, uh, especially social media accounts. Uh. I don't like the word hacked because for me, it's misleading. It tells a good story. Oh, my account got hacked. It's as if someone hacked into Facebook. I like to use the word hijacked because most, if not uh, most of the cases, is actually there was a slack of the user themselves. So be it a personal user or corporate user, it's not really that account got hacked, but it's just that your credential was hijacked. Be it you use it, you use um, on a public um, machine, you use a public Wi-Fi. Because I, 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 I did, um, for one of my sharing session before, I actually look into all these cases huh, and how they got hacked. Like for example, um, small, business, uh, small business owners, those who sell, uh, they have their own store, they have their own bakery. When I look into it, oh, actually what happened was, uh, they got orders from WhatsApp, right? A lot of what, or orders from WhatsApp, uh, or from IG. So they hired a staff. And they use the same credential, the same user password they share with the staff. It Sometimes it's even a family member, trusted a family member. But then uh, the guy left her, they got into fight, and then they changed the password. Uh, most of the cases, it's the responsibility of the owner. What happened was, because we used the word hack, it takes away the responsibility from the owner. So the coming back to the question whether or not the uh, organization should use social media or not, actually that, uh, there is no question. Uh, there is no um, consideration because be it you a corporate organization, be you a small business owner, be you a person, it goes back to the personal, the individual itself on your practice in terms of how you um, manage and use all these social media accounts because they are actually tools that can help you manage better all these social media accounts. Um, the question about on the corporation side and on the organization. So the whose responsibility is it? Um, when it comes to security, cyber security, the responsibility falls to everyone. It's not just the security guy. Everyone on the has his own responsibility, even the tea lady, even the receptionist, even the driver, because all of these people, they have uh, their own responsibility in terms of security, but in their own uh, respective manner, in their own um, domain of work. Like for example, like a driver. So a driver, he has the CEO at the back. Sometimes in the car, he will have confidential phone calls. Huh? So who, who um, are we to say that the driver did not even record it? Uh, even social engineering measures, um, I've not heard it of in Malaysia, but in US, in the more advanced country, uh, when they send, um, it actually common practice to actually send a social engineer in the form of a cleaning lady, a tea lady. So they go to the competitors um, organization as a as a. They, they might be a really a cleaning lady, but then. The competitor will ask her, uh, when you go there, you pick up all the rubbish. Because sometimes people just got password and then they throw in the rubbish. Even if you use a shredder, eh, if it's just a one-line shredder, people get back the paper and then they match it again. Uh, so, uh, so it's a responsibility to everyone. 
But when it comes to the ultimate responsibility, for example, if um, the company is being sued, it falls to the number one, uh, the CEO. And this has happened, um, cases has happened where the company gets uh, sued and there are cases where the CEO is, act is actually uh, sent to prison. Even though it was a uh, mishap happening in the uh, one of the employees, but as the ultimate responsibility, the number one in the company has to pay the price. Lah. In terms of responsibility, everyone in the company, but who has to pay the price? The number one in the company. Yeah. So that's the burden of being the number one. Yes, Dr. Gary, you have yeah. something um, yeah. Since we are on this very hot topic, I think just now what uh, Cairo mentioned was very interesting about it's not hacks being hijacked, right? So I think, yeah, that's very true. So how many of us have heard of like a uh, defamation um, that is uh, being posted online, uh, be it Facebook, social media and everything? Then when they get sued, they're like, oh no, my account got hacked, actually it's not me. All right. So uh, first of all, please do know that that line doesn't work. Okay, because according to the Evidence Act in Malaysia, right, so uh, the burden of proof is us, the account owner, to prove that you are not there, you didn't assess the account, you were somewhere else, you're flying or something, during the account, the thing's been posted. And if your computer or the IP, the network, where the, the defamation, defamatory uh, statements been issued belongs to you, is automatically is you, unless proven otherwise. Okay, so that goes for comments too. Okay, a lot of us are fantastic when we have keyboards in front of us, right? So, oh, what would they know? Okay, it's just a matter of who is taking action against us. Okay, so when we do something online, please uh, bear that in mind and please do remember that the burden of proof is the owner. Okay, you can't say that. Uh, somebody hijacked, you know, it's been hacked and everything. So a lot of time when people have been, uh, the accounts been hijacked or been locked out from their accounts, I always tell them that immediately do make a police report. At least you know from that time onwards, anything that happens or from the account, you have approved, I actually make police report. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, very interesting. I mean, I was just, uh, thank you Dr. Karin for sharing that because I think it happened uh, a couple of months back uh, when uh, you know the assassination of uh, assassination of uh, the previous uh, prime minister of Japan, and then it was posted on Mothership Singapore on uh, Facebook, and then uh, and then some some guy thought it was a joke, and he tagged Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong. He said, "You're next." So within two hours, they found out where he, where his IP address and his address, and came in and took everything. What's meant to be a joke? He thought, no harm, right? You know, you know, maybe frustrated with the PAP party or whatever. You know, just made that kind of statement, and that you know now he's 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 being you know he's, he's being sued or whatever. So, I think um, we we are in a generation where you know maybe election is coming and uh, we like to always air our opinions. And uh, what Dr. Karin said is keyboard warriors, because. Free people want a free market, free opinion. So people just, uh, you know, comment, uh, you know, strongly on social media. But I think as professionals, we have to remember what we are representing and what we are uh, responsible for. Okay, uh, we do not have. Uh, we have five minutes left. Okay, but very interesting. I I think somebody uh, posted this question. I think it's uh, something that we all is close to our heart. Uh, there are a lot of cases that people are losing money from their bank account. Maybe what I call this as unauthorized transactions uh, without any OTP access. How can this happen? What can we do to prevent it? Is bank still safe, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure many people know maybe the red, red octopus, the bank that has the red octopus is quite in the limelight uh, recently for unauthorized transaction is over social media on Twitter and everything. Maybe, uh, uh, Wiki, you'd like to share on this? <laughs> All the tough questions. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, unauthorized transaction, I think it's becoming a very hot topic. Um, there, there are a lot of cases. Uh, people lose money. 
uh, when you see all those uh, WhatsApp messages that our aunties and uncles pass over the WhatsApp, uh, they will say, oh, just by using a phone call, they then put down the call, 20,000 gone. Uh, uh, they, they just replied to a SMS and then 50,000 gone and, and those kind of cases. Um, to, to a certain extent, uh, yes, those are social engineering attacks. But you have to understand that it doesn't simply work that way. Just by a phone call, people cannot transfer money from your account. Right? That, 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 there will be something that we call in cybersecurity called pretext, pretexting, meaning something, uh, an, an event uh, or, or, or a line of event has happened uh, before even the phone call reaches you. So you may have downloaded an application and, and that application is already in your phone and then, then only the user or the hacker actually calls you. So this very closely related to some of the cases that happened in Malaysia couple of months ago, like what uh, Kairos has mentioned about the maid services, right? Um, so there was a legitimate uh, attack happening on most of the popular maid services where the application was actually made available and people are downloading it. And the major feature of this application is once you have downloaded, it will hijack your SMS feature and will send a copy of every SMS that is being received by you to the attacker. So that's what it does. So when they call you or you have already inserted your bank details to the application that so-called you want to hire a maid, they already have your username, they already have your password, and maybe when they call you, maybe they just want to get the OTP or the OTP is already being sent to them when they are logging in and doing the transaction. So that's how the possible line of event will be. Just by giving a call, I, there's no proof or evidence that using a phone call, they can transfer your money. Right? So again, that falls back to the user, the responsibility. Uh, whether are you, are you responding to the right email? Are you responding to the right text, SMSs? Are you downloading from a secure source? Uh, some people will just say, click here to download the application and then go and click. But you don't know where is it resolving, where is it bringing you? It may look legitimate, but it's not. But the hackers are smart because for us to actually mimic an application is not that hard. We just have to change the front logo and then it looks like uh, whatever application that you usually use. So that's how easy it is for us to trick people. So, so again, um, uh, it takes a lot of work. We need to give credit to the hackers because they are putting a lot of effort to actually do this kind of thing. It's not like I wake up and then I want to attack you and, and I get your bank account and then I transfer 20000 It's very, very tedious work, but it's a one-time job. Once you have done it, you can replicate it to other users, to other users, to other users. So that's how it works. Yeah. Okay, maybe a final, final word from maybe Cairo first. Uh, what's your final advice on this? What can uh, the public uh, do to protect themselves from uh, cybersecurity and social engineering? Um, maybe I would like to um, focus on the trusting mentality. So why... Um, a lot of social engineers are using social media because we have this trusting mentality. If we get a WhatsApp from a familiar number, fam familiar uh, name, we immediately, oh, this is my father. Or even in, 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 in uh, Facebook. Suddenly, um, a friend uh, private PM us or DM us, or Kairul, uh, uh, I, I got into some accident, I need to pay for my car. We immediately trust that is our friend, but um, so we immediately like even if, if they ask, yeah, I need help now. I need to pay. Oh, I, uh, then we immediately pay, uh, transfer the money to them. But so this is why social media is being used by all these um, social engineers huh, or these hackers. So when you get an email, or WhatsApp, or Facebook message, or a Instagram message. Don't immediately trust that that is the person that you know because maybe the account has been hijacked or maybe they just um, um, they're using a different sometimes they use different um, they just copy the profile photo and then they just get some information and then they send you a message or oh, oh, hi Kadul uh, this is my new number so don't immediately trust you just um, be, always be vigilant uh, in terms of um, who are you communicating with. If it just suddenly feels fishy, suddenly it feels pushy. Uh, so just be careful about that. I think even like the what happened with the Jimmy Kimmel video because they they caught off guard because oh this is a reporter. So they suddenly felt this 
um, they, they trusted the reporter eh takkan uh, would uh, the reporter wouldn't ask me would really ask for my password right uh, so you you immediately let your gut down so uh, uh, as a final parting words um having i mean be vigilant and do not immediately trust who you communicate with even though it looks familiar your the face is there but just be careful and vigilant yeah. doctor doctor karen any final words uh, i think to add on what karo say i think uh, it's the trust thing and i think um in cybersecurity we have something called uh, multi factor authentication so yeah so whatever text that you get dm and everything from uh, emails or social media and everything Put it down, give a call to your friend or whoever asking for, fat, uh, for help. So that is a way for you, us to authenticate, right? So we also, I also have a lot of stories space that, oh, how come my agent asking me for money all of a sudden? So, but then they never actually called the person to verify because they say it's maybe a bit malu to ask somebody whether they're actually asking me for money and everything. So this do verifications. And then on your devices, always, always uh, update patches and all those things because uh, patches that's been uh, sent out at all time for any software or for any OS is actually to cover all the vulnerability they have actually um, detected. So that is actually a protection for us. So because once uh, the vulnerability, uh, vulnerability have been detected and the patch has been out there, they'll go for the lowest hanging fruit. They'll just attack those that were patched, right? And uh, for mobile, uh, mobile devices, a lot of us uh, download a lot of apps. Uh, do a quick check which are the apps that you have not used for the past few weeks or past month. Delete it. Because that is another lower hanging path to come and uh, hijack and all those things, right? Yeah, I think um, with that, good cyber hygiene, right? Okay, thank you. Um, any last words? Because uh, yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, I would like to highlight uh, about being responsible. Right, um, your data is yours. Uh, be responsible where you put it. Um, uh, touching a little bit on the social media uh, that being used by business owners, right? Um, I see a lot of things. Uh, they they might ask, hey, uh, how come they know that this person got this bank account, and they target precisely that person, because they won't be posting I have a whatever bank account, right? It's very simple to detect that. I let you know how. You go to the bank's uh, uh, what's uh, Facebook page or Twitter page, you can go and see and count how many people are ranting about their services not being up to the mark. Right? Those are disgruntled users and it's very easy to detect them. And for me as a social engineer, I just have to create something that looks like that bank and then DM them, slide to their DM and say, hey, I saw this problem. We want to help you. Blah, 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 blah. The rest is history. So don't go and rant publicly as much as you are angry with that service provider. Don't go and rant and say, hey, why your service like this? I give you one star, half star and all that. Uh, that might work for to release your anger. But again, at the back end, uh, someone's watching, oh, this guy got a problem. Huh? Okay, let's go and attack them. Right? So you yourself are putting, it, uh, are putting a target at your back. So that's why using social media, you have to be very responsible. And, and you need to know what to do, what not to do. And most importantly, you need to also be updated when you are using certain applications. Nothing is free. Facebook is free, yes. Uh, but how is Facebook still one of the richest company in the world? Is because the one who are using it, including myself, we are the product, right? So long the humans are there as a product, they will make money out of us. So that's why it's very important for you to have this kind of a hygiene, uh, or cybersecurity hygiene. Uh, when you're using certain services as well. So that's my last word. Okay, thank you so much, Wiki, Dr. Karin, and Karo. Please give them a round of applause. I think very good insight. Uh, thank you so much for your time.